learned where I know about life, whatever that is, is where I was raised. This may come to a shock to some of you, but I was raised on a farm uh, in southeast Kansas. I'm a farm kid. Uh, some people don't believe me when I say that, but I can prove that I was raised on a farm because I know where farm fathers go to discipline their children. Now, you've heard the stories or you've been there. Where do they go? <laughs> behind the shed, behind the barn. I spent a large portion of my adolescence behind the barn because I was a non-reform boy. On our farm, if you saw a cat with a tail on it, you knew he was a visitor. <laughs> That's a joke, ladies. It's just a joke. <laughs> I love cats, okay? I love cats. I do. I love cats. They taste like chicken. Anyway, uh, it's not important. The most vivid memory I have, that's a joke. The most, important, the most vivid memory I have is uh, I was 13 years old, uh, and I got caught smoking a cigarette, uh, and Dad took me behind the barn. But, but he didn't lay a hand on me to teach me a lesson. He made me smoke an entire carton of unfiltered camel cigarettes. Wow! I was sick for two days. I, uh, <laughs> I wish Dad would have caught me with a woman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sick yet, Dad. Send one more in, will you? Uh, no, I haven't learned my lesson. Keep bringing them in. Keep bringing them in. So I'm not saying that's right or wrong or good or bad. It's just different from yours. That's my background. There's uh, so many concepts. I do, we don't have enough time to talk about the credibility and the reliability and the responsiveness, but there's one that's most important. I'm not going to share with you what I think is a $50,000 piece of information because when I was in college, I remembered one piece of information. And that's about what it cost me back in the 70s. And I'm just going to give it to you. It was called the ABCs of human behavior. ABC. It's what dictates and is the line of pattern in all human behavior. It is antecedent, behavior, and consequence. That's the pattern. There was first an antecedent. That's what precedes a behavior. That's what antecedent means, precedes. It's going to be a command, a promise, a request, a tagline. That is an antecedent. It hopefully then gets a certain behavior to occur. And after that behavior occurs, there is a consequence of that behavior. Now, for years, this is what a lot of psychologists used to teach, that if you want a behavior to occur, the antecedent has to be better. you got to promise better. you got to warranty more. you got to guarantee better. you got to close the sale. That's what will get a behavior to occur. It didn't take very long to figure out that that doesn't cause the behavior but just one time. If you want the behavior to occur again and again and again, that consequence better be good because that's what will get them back. Put it in layman terms. When I was a kid growing up, I'd come home from school. I'd run up my quarter-mile lane. I'd run in, in inside. I'd plop down on the couch. I'd watch Leave it to Beaver. My mother would walk in and say, Mark, go mow the yard. What was that? That's the antecedent. That's the A for a desired behavior. What was my behavior? Never got off the couch, did I? Why? There was no ill consequence of not. However, if my father came in and said, Mark, go mow the yard, exactly the same antecedent. What was my behavior then? Kind of like smoking a cigarette, you know. I'd be mowing that yard again and again and again and again. The consequence causes the behavior the con it's, the, it's the experience is what they call it in, in, in customer service, client service. It's the consequence. I, I am not a car expert. I certainly would never profess to be. Even though I was raised on a farm, you think I should have some mechanical ability. My brother was the gearhead. I know nothing about cars. Nothing. Uh, and they don't matter to me. Uh, I drive a Kia, okay? It doesn't. I don't care. I don't care. Uh, and some of you say, well, why would you buy a Kia? Well, the sales guy told me this baby would stop on a dime. You know why it'll stop on a dime? It can't get over the dime. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only car I know where the cigarette lighter and the heater, same thing. Same thing. <laughs> you ever been in a car when you turn the radio on, the car slows down? <laughs> okay, don't drive a Kia, but I'm trying to make a point. I know nothing about cars. It's cost me a lot of money. I know it has because I have to take it into the dealership for everything. And I know they're getting me. I know they are. Last week, I paid $56 for blinker fluid. Is that right? Is that, no, no. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. 
took my car into the dealership. I just wanted a simple oil change. He came back and he said, uh, you know, you got a little noise in your muffler. I said, yeah, I heard that noise. Uh, did you check it out? Yeah, we checked it out. You're going to need an entire new exhaust system. Really? It's just a little boom, boom, boom. That's it? No, no, you got it. This is hooked to that connection. They're all, it's one system. It's a $660. I, well, I, okay, I'll do that later. I'm driving down the road. I'm calling a buddy. I'm going, you can't believe this. I got this little noise I can barely hear. This is going to cost me almost $700 to get it fixed. He said, you need to take it to Phil. I said, who is Phil? He said, Phil is a mechanic just opened a shop just down the road from you in your little suburb. He said, you need to take it into Phil. He's just got a little two-bay shop, but I took my car in there. You need to take it to Phil. So I drove right by. I pulled in. Now, Phil in the Midwest, we call a good old boy. Phil is a big old boy. <laughs> Phil does not wear britches big enough for that big old behind. <laughs> In fact, your first instinct would be to think that Phil was a plumber. Okay. <laughs> he puts a car up on the rack. I, I didn't tell him I'd been to the dealership. I said, can you check out that noise? He put it up on the rack. A couple minutes, he drug me out. In the shop, we're standing underneath the car on the left, and he says, there's your problem right there. Flat deal right there. Oh, that's a bad deal. <laughs> what, what deal are we looking at, Phil? <laughs> There's a whole lot of deals up there. If that's a deal, that's a deal. There's, he goes, no, that deal right there. That, that there. And then he reeled off what it was. It was a bipolar deoxygenating flipness resonator or something. I have no clue. <laughs> he, said, he said, that's the deal. I said, we got to replace that. That's your, that's your problem. I said, that's it, that one little deal. He said, yeah. He said, we got to replace that. I said, Phil, what's that going to cost me? He said, you got two ways you can go. He says, you got your regular model. It's going to be about $36. He says, that nice glass pack is going to be $39. Now, your call. <laughs> I said, Phil, let's light this candle. <laughs> We're going to go all the way. You give me that $39 model. Who is my mechanic now? Phil. Phil. You know, there's a lot of other places in town that advertise great service and take care of me and provide me and doing the right thing. Those are all antecedents. What did Phil provide? He provided the consequence. He provided the experience. Who is my mechanic now? It's Phil. How much has that meant to him? Because he provided what was my C, my experience. Mine was trust. I need somebody I could trust. And that's my mechanic now. Phil also does body work. I have two daughters. Need I remind you? <laughs> my insurance premium looks like a ransom note, okay? <laughs> what experience are you providing? Are you bringing your people to see the consequence? And most times, the, hi the hinge factor is going to be that service. Because when people leave, or if they do business elsewhere, seldom is it price uh, product, placement, location, 67% of the time, according to Dr. Michael LaBeouf, who wrote a book on how to keep customers for life, 67% of the time it is because of an attitude of indifference on the part of an employee or management. An attitude of indifference. It's not, because of, it's not that your brother-in-law owns the other place. It's, it's attitude. It comes down to that service aspect. Folks, are you providing the C, the consequence? Are you providing that golden rule of human relations for everybody coming through the door and for every employee that you have? And that is, do unto others as they want to be done unto. And this is a theory of what I came to say. Guest service is not a secret. I could not tell you one thing you didn't know. I came to remind you of a couple of things. But I know that a lot of you would like more than that. You would like a piece of information that would put money in your pocket. Would you like that? Sure you would. So I'm going to take my last 30 seconds. I'm going to talk about Amway. Okay. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> My sister's a big Amway dealer. She hates that joke, but it's just a joke. <laughs> Not too long ago, I'm doing some paperwork. I race through my paperwork like a good jerk would. <laughs> I take these letters that I prepared. I run to the mailbox. I throw them in the mailbox. I flip up the flag. I'm done. Did I double check those letters before I put them in the mailbox? No. It's not what I do. One of the letters did not get a stamp on it, but it stuck in between all the letters that have stamps.
Lo and behold, that letter without the stamp came back to me. Why? Postage was due. Well, now, how did they know where to send it? It's because my name and address was in the upper left-hand corner. So I got to thinking. <laughs> this is going to save you a lot of money. <laughs> Next time you want to mail a letter, wherever you want to mail it to, you put that name and address in the upper left-hand corner. <laughs> put your name and address right in the middle. <laughs> Folks, I have not bought a postage stamp in 12 years. <laughs> Thank you very much. You've been a great group. God love you. Thank you.